it and it's time for a bit of Easter crochet and ta -da! here we have our little bunny in a jumper that's what I've called them bunnies in jumpers because I've done this sort of like um, a different sort of technique it's almost like a granny square but it goes round and round and of course we have a bunny and he has a little bobtail there and of course we have a surprise of a chocolate orange in there but of course as you know it does not have to be an orange it can be anything in there as long as it's sort of that sort of shape and these all stand independently on their own so even after you've eaten the delicious gift you can still have this sat on the side as a cute sort of easter decoration or does fit some doll's heads I think it's a bit of a big hat but you could make it into a cute doll hat you could do all sorts with it the children can play with it um I just thought it worked out quite nicely and I like this idea of sort of pretending he was in a little jumper now you may see behind me in fact I'll pick him up he has a little brother too here he is now again we have a cream egg this time or there's loads of different types of chocolate eggs you can get to actually fit in there and again it doesn't have to be chocolate it could be I don't know a, a little box with a gift in it could be all sorts or again he stands alone just as a decoration perhaps you've got an Easter tree you could hang him on things like that now this little guy is an exclusive though I have just started my patreon page wow that was a scary experience I haven't got a clue what to do I'm hoping I've done it right uh, but basically if you don't know Patreon is a way of supporting a YouTuber and it's a small monthly fee to see a sort of more exclusive footage as well a little bit more behind the scenes and there's also a discount on to go onto my website with um, so if it's something you want to have a look at there's a link below and some of you may already be on do patreon or be on patreon let me know if you are let me know if you have a patreon as well pop it down below um, it's nice to sort of work out how to do it because it took me a while believe you me so this little fella is on my patreon plus there will be more crochet and obviously doll related things similar sort of content to my youtube but a little bit more perhaps behind the scenes um and the odd exclusive sort of offer and deal as well as we go along but i am still learning so be patient with me on that one but today we're gonna do this cutie uh, so let's go top down and get crocheting so here we go with our little Easter bunny. It doesn't have to be for Easter, it can be for any time. But he is one of my chocolate cosies. So we have a chocolate orange in there. And as I mentioned before, we'll take the orange out. They do stand quite nicely anyway. So you don't have to have an orange in them. Or depending on what the gift is, you can use the gift. And then it still stands as a quite cute easter decoration or just just because it's cute it's a bunny it's cute so this is what we're going to be doing today as you can see i have an array of items i am using a double knit yarn i've got a variegated just because i thought it was a bit of fun for the jumper and i've also got this sparkly white which you don't have to use sparkly white I, it's just one of my favorite yarns that's all so we have two different yarns there both double knits now in this little tray here i have a pom-pom maker because he has a little pom-pom tail. I do have two different sizes. I used the larger one for this one and I couldn't make up mine whether it was too big, but I actually think it is better. So I will show you. In fact, we'll move the small one and then I can show you the size of that in a bit. Or shall I show you now? There is a number on here somewhere. It says 35 here. So if you've got a pom-pom maker, but you can always cut them down or you could even use a ready-bought pom-pom. That's one ear I've done because you don't need to see me do both ears. We have some safety eyes because as you see, he has got these big eyes in here. Now, please remember on the recipient of the item because if I say, if it's a younger person, you don't want to be sort of uh, anyone swallowing these bits, should I say. They are safety. But I still get a little bit nervous myself. So I would have a tendency to maybe just embroider some little eye details on or something like that. But I am using safety eyes here. I'm just wondering if I got a ruler here. I have. I have a ruler. I'm actually, well, not organised. That was just coincidental. So you can see the size we're on. I would say five, six. That is, I would say, about an eight millimetre eye. I don't know whether you can see the size in there. But again, completely up to you. Little eyes, big eyes. It doesn't matter. It all gives character to it. And I've got a little stitch marker there. I thought I'd have a carrot one so it works nicely for this particular style. My little scissors. And my hook size is a 3.5 millimeter hook. So it's a nice size to use. Obviously, keep checking on your tension. Oh, I didn't mention this. This is 
I just used this to do a little embroidered nose. That was all that was about. Um, what's your tension? You need to keep checking on your orange or depending on what you're using because everybody's tension is different. So that is something to keep an eye out for. But I'll talk you through that as we go. Oh, and I've also got a little bit of toy stuff in because the head is sewn on separately. So this does need a little bit of stuffing as well. So shall we get started? I'm going to use a variegated. I've just... I like my variegated yarns and I just like the way it comes out differently. I've got a feeling looking at this, it's going to come out the same because it started uh, with the yellow last time and it's starting with the yellow again. So I might get a similar sort of jumper, but I think it's sort of striped quite nicely without me having to keep changing yarn colours, which is the the best bit about a variegated yarn, really. The top starts under his head, obviously, in an amigurumi style and then it moves on to... I suppose you could argue granny square-esque sort of style is the same system as a granny square. It's just that we will be going round and round and round rather than, uh, obviously, the square. So let's get this onto the hook. There's our slip knot. On it goes. Make sure it's not too tight. We need it to move. And like with most of my amigurumi, I'm going to start with two chain. If you really do prefer the magic loop, obviously that is an option. It's just something I really don't get on with. So that is why I'm not going to do it. I think I'm going to need a drink. My throat feels like it's going to go. I have got some water behind me. I think I might have to pause this. Bear with me a second. I think I'll keep my water bottle on the table. I love this one. So it's a really pretty water bottle. So I'm going to put that over there. So I've got it in case it goes. I don't know why it decided it was going. Right. So what I was saying is we need two chain unless you were doing the magic ring. Entirely up to you what you prefer. And I just work into that first chain and I'm going to do six double crochet. So here we go. So that's one. Remember UK terms. Two, three, four, five and six because yes i'm very aware in the us this would be an sc a single crochet but here in the uk they are double crochets we call them so it's the same stitch just got a different name that's all so i've just pulled that just to tighten up the hole in the middle there and now we're going to do two double crochets in each of those six to give us 12 stitches so here we go so that's two in our first one two in our second one Two, number three, two in number four, two in number five, and the last one, two in number six. So there we go. So I'm just tightening that again. So we now have 12 stitches, still not enough. We now need to do two in each again which will give us 24 stitches so off we go so i'm just going to count the single so like i'll count one to one to 12 but i will be putting two in each one so that is number one that is number two number three number four number five Halfway there, number six, seven, a little bit more yarn out, just going to go rolling around. So I did say seven, I hope I said seven, we'll soon find out. That's eight, nine, ten, eleven and 12 so i hope i've got 24 stitches now so we've got 24 there i'm going to just give, sort of wing it there because i'm pretty sure i have so i've got 24 stitches still not quite enough i need another six stitches to get it up to 30 and it does matter because when you come to do this we need to have the exact gaps in between so i do need 30 stitches on there so to get 30 i'm going to do two in one one in the next three yeah so two in the first one then one one and one and we're going to do that six times so here we go so we have two in this first one and then two uh, three individuals so we have one one 
and one and I'm going to grab a pen because I know I'm talking so I've got my pen here I just want to mark that down that's my first of the six could pop a stitch marker in there but I want to make sure the numbers are right so we have two and then a one one and I won. That's my second set. Well, be a good idea if I actually had the paper the other side. Um, but I like to have my pattern on my left side when I'm reading. So that's what I'm marking on. So our set number three. So we have two in the first one. And then we have one, two, and three. And mark it down. Number four. We have a two in this first one. And then a one two and three. Oh, we're changing colour, we're changing colour. Might be slightly different because I don't think the other one changed to that colour that quick. So again, good job on marking it down because again, I get easily distracted. That was four. Number five, we're going to have two in this one and then a one, a one and a one. So I know it's number five. I've only got one more to go, so I don't need to mark it down. So we're going to have a two and then a one a one and a one so that if you have a look now on your orange you can see sort of where it sits in fact if I turn it over you see this sort of little logo it's just a little bit bigger than the logo so it gives you a rough idea of what you're working on there now I'm going to pop my stitch marker in we don't really need it for much because as soon as we get onto the jumper it's uh, it's not an issue at all because that you'll be stopping and starting but because I do need a double crochet round now I'm just double checking I have only got one I have uh, it's easier if I pop the stitch marker there because I can talk to you at the same time so off we go we're going to go one full round in this now gorgeous turquoise do like turquoise i don't know what it is this light sort of almost ice creamy color i mean it's not is it mint i'd say it's this mint isn't it? it's not turquoise it's towards those color sort of styles but yeah i would call it more of a minty color or maybe a bit too blue for mint i don't know what color would you say it is i don't know turquoise blue light blue mint could be any of them that's the thing with colors everybody sees them differently as well all right keep going keep going this yarn, this ball of yarn is going to come undone like mad. Drives me mad when you get them like that. It's just how they're wound up, isn't it? They're wound up like that to wind me up, I think. Right, we're almost round to our little carrot, which means we're one full round. And that will be it for double crochets for his body. Oh, a couple more stitches there. So I'm hoping I have my 30 stitches. Always double check. I'm not going to at the moment. I'm just trust, risking and trusting myself while we get on with it. But I would recommend for yourself, count how many stitches you have now. It does matter. Right, I'm going to do a slip stitch into the next stitch. Okay, I'm going to take my stitch marker out because I really don't need it anymore. Oh, if I can get my nail onto the hook, it doesn't want to do it. Let me hold it that way. No, it's not doing it. There we go. It's gone. I will need that for the head, so I've just popped it back over there. So we've got the top of our orange now. We now need to start going around the body. So for that, I've slip stitched in, and I'm going to start with three chain. One, two, and three. And that does count as my first treble. And you can see the little hole where that slip stitch came from. I'm now going to do two more trebles in there. So yarn round into the hole, pull it through, one and two. That was my treble. Yarn round, same again. So it gives us the equivalent to three trebles in that space. We are now going to miss two stitches and into the third one, three trebles. One, two and three. I think you know what's going to come, don't you? We're going to miss two and into the third one, three trebles you've got it you can see it's already starting to pull around which is what you want you do want it to do that so don't panic we're going to miss two and into number three three trebles one two three now if you like your granny squares this one's going to seem so easy so we miss two and into the third one amazing what you can do with this three treble combination there's just so many different designs uh, we're going to miss two 
into number three. One, two, and three. And there's two. One, two, three. Miss two. Some of them I'm just going to stop and comment on now. Make sure this here is tight before you move on to your next one. Because if this is loose, for example, so we did that and then we went one, two, three, and do the next one, it's going to make the gaps sort of too wide here, so it'll make you work loose. So you do need to make sure it's quite tight on the hook before you advance onto the next stitch. So that third one, one, two, and three. Yeah. Missed two. We're almost round on our first round. It goes really quickly after this. And I think we should have space by the look of it for one more. So we missed two and then it'd be in that one. And then as you can see, we would have two there as well. So that's worked out nicely. So I must have counted right somewhere. So in we go with that to change colour. One, two and three. So that is our first round. And as you can see, it's curled round. So we need to just push it round the other way so this is now going to start working down our orange but we need to do a slip stitch join first in the top of those three chain that you started with so there's your slip stitch so you've joined it together we're going to start again with three chain one two and three now we're going to go into that space here so it's directly below that chain so we're going to do two trebles one and two now it's easier to see now because you're not going to be going into a stitch you're just going in these spaces these little triangles here in between each set of three and that's where we're going to base like with a granny square so here we go so you're going to have three trebles in each one and as I said it'll start to speed up now I think when you're not looking for a stitch to go in as well you're going in a chain space or a space this isn't a chain space this is just a space uh, it makes the work quicker because you're not sort of worrying where it's going it's sort of relatively easy to see oh it is so yeah it's sort of coming out like the other one colour wise be careful it's not going to tangle in fact let me move my white because otherwise this one's going to grab hold of it and I'll end up with a mixture of both balls tangled up together which I can do without. So we have three and keep going, just three trebles in every single one of these spaces. Now, I think this, a beginner could have a good go at this one. I don't think you'd have too much trouble. Uh, you may want to slow it down though. Don't forget, you can actually slow the whole process down in settings. It does affect the voice, um but sometimes you only need the visual anyway so that might work out better so we're almost round for our next one now if it stays like the other one it's going to stay like a white jumper in the center And we're round so we now it feels like that's a big gap fair enough but you do need to slip stitch into that top of that first three chain so we're going to do our slip stitch then we're going to three chain one two and three and directly below the space we're not jumping over here which i know some patterns do it's the one directly below for two trebles Remember, the chain counts as our first treble. And off we go again. You see, we don't need to worry about a stitch marker because we're stopping and starting. So you can always see where your line actually sort of restarts. So just three trebles in each one. I've got to remember not to get carried away in how many rounds I do. I do need to double check. We will have a look at Bunny in a second. Did I do a treble or a half treble there? Not sure. So we will have a look on Bunny in a second when we get round this round to give you an idea of where we're up to. I am a little bit of a granny square addict, so I do enjoy make, doing this particular style. And to make sure this yarn doesn't get tangled. Let's say it just starts to unwind itself and I know there is a bit there I'm going to have to be careful with so I might have to stop just to 
make sure it's not going to tangle up and we also need to check whether it's fitting nicely on our orange yeah I'm, I'm happy with that it feels it feels right when you've made a few of them you sort of can feel whether the sizing is going to be right or not. Can you see what's happening? It's tangling up like that. So I need to make sure it's not going to knot. If you think there is a knot coming or like that, that's quite the tangle. Don't panic because quite often, as long as you've not pulled it too tight, you can get it out. So we're going to be messing about for a second now. Uh, apologies for this. But, uh, it shows everybody's yarn tangles. There we go, and that's where it's going to do it. If obviously a knot is too big, there's times that I've just been impatient and I've just cut it and uh, moved on to the next bit, which depending on how this goes, I might have to, um, because otherwise, or I'll have to pause, I think, and untangle. We'll see how we go. I just want to get around this first one so we can look at the next bit. There's only one more set, so I think I'll pause it after that. So here we go. We have one, two, and three slip stitch join and let's have a look at what we've got so grab our orange yep that, that's going on nicely can you see how we're working it down now if we look at this little guy we've already done oh my orange is rolling away we've already got three rounds so it's easy to count so it's just one two and three on this little guy i've got one two three four five and six rounds so that is what we're going to do but i need to pause to untangle that you won't really see the difference but i know i'm going to have to pause i'll see you in a second right well i actually caved and i cut the knot um so i've got a little bit still here of the white so we'll see how it goes but it's, it will make his jumper different which i suppose that gives some variation so here we go we have one two and three and we're on round four and we decided we needed six, but I would recommend you check when you get to five, because again, depending on tension, you may sort of want one less, one more. I don't think you'd want one less, um, but you know, just keep an eye on it. So just three trebles into each of those spaces between the previous rounds, three trebles. Yeah, I could have untangled the yarn, but I decided to get impatient and get on with the video. I don't like cutting the yarn, apart from the fact when it's a variegated yarn, it affects the colour combination. But it's the fact that I've got another piece of yarn to sew in at the end, which I really can't. Yeah, you know. you, nobody wants to sew in unless they have to. I don't mind sewing in, but it can be a bit tedious. So obviously if you have to cut your yarn you've got to start a new piece of yarn so it's going to sort of add those extra two strands for you to sew in although i suppose it shows you how i would actually join the yarn so this is almost round four. number four i know some of you will probably skip forward now you know this there's six rounds so some of you will be with me still and some of you will have skipped that's okay that's how it goes right slip stitch join for round four ding ding right put it nice and tight three chain and two troubles directly below Yeah, I don't think it's going to make a huge difference on the colour. We've got two and three in each one. I'm trying to keep an eye on this yarn when it's going to run out as well. I managed to get quite a bit of the white off. It's when it got to the uh, the colour, we can't make up our mind what colour it is. Uh, it just tangled up too much. One, two... One, two, three. One, two, and three. Nearly round. So 
I said we'd check at five, didn't I? So this is the fifth one. Just heard a little pussycat come into the room. Oh, there we go. We've got on to it. There we are. In fact, I'm going to start. Can you see how it's suddenly changing? Because this is yellow that I'm going to be bringing in. So I don't want one that's going to have the little bit of bluey colour in. So let's take it all the way back to there. And let's get this new piece of yarn joined in. Now everybody has different ways of joining in. So, you know, it doesn't have to be the way I do it. Whichever way works for you. Something I've never 100% mastered, I would have said. I'm actually going to just pull it in there. I'm going to pull that in tight. That needs knotting really, but for speed I'm not going to. And then off we go. One, two, three. We'll tie it, I think, after I've done this one. One, two, three. This is a pretty colour. And slip stitch join. Right, I am going to tie it because I don't want it suddenly coming low. So you say those are the extra ends I've got to sew in now, unfortunately. So don't pull it so tight that it distorts either. You've got to be careful on that. But yeah, we can't tell that's been joined now. So I've got these bits now that are going to drive me mad. So I'm going to try and tuck them inside so they're not in my way. So I said we'd double check, didn't we, on five. Let's check. We are five. One, two, three, four and five. Onto our little orange and yes, I definitely need another round. So as I said at the beginning, I've done six rounds So off we go final round in this sort of I don't know I keep wanting to call it a granny square style But that's sort of a little bit off-putting because it doesn't look like a granny square If you do granny squares, you know what I mean So off we go our final round because look the final one was the blue on this one And it's going to be the yellow one now. So that makes him a bit different I know Easter seems a long way away, but if you are the sort of person who makes lots of gifts for friends or you're making charity ones or school fair ones, or anything like that, I do realise you need to get started. In fact, I'm a little bit delayed. Um, a lot of places are already getting Easter things in. I know our supermarkets are absolutely full of Easter eggs. So, uh, so I need to be a little bit more organised than I already have been. So this is our final round. We are going to be doing, I don't know if you can see there, there is a double crochet round there as well. I've just done that. Just It tightens it up. If you change the length of the stitch, so if you're doing everything in trebles, it's relatively loose. You go down to half trebles, it tightens it up a bit. If you go down to a double crochet, it tightens it up even further. So it will just pull it in by doing that double crochet round. That's where I did the new yarn, so I need to be careful not to catch that. Otherwise, I'll be pulling in a separate part of yarn. And this is our last one of our trebles. And it's the last one of trebles full stop because there's no more trebles on this design. So, slip stitch join. Just the same. I'm going to do one chain this time because we're going to do a double crochet round. Now, everybody has different ways of doing this. I like to do my third stitch into the space. You'll see what I do, but basically it is just one in each stitch. I'll show you when I get to it. So I would do, I do one, two over that. Now you can see there is a stitch here. Yeah, can you see that stitch? Well, I'm actually going to go into the hole. I just like the way it edges, that's all. So it suddenly actually looks like it's two over the three and then one into the hole. But whichever works for you. Basically, it's just one double crochet into each treble stitch. I'll tell you what, I'll do the next one in the stitch and I'll show you the difference. It doesn't make a huge difference. It's just a personal preference. Now, that is where I've gone into the hole. And this time it's where I've gone into the stitch. I think this gives a little bit more definition. And that's the only reason I do it. We're going to try it on our orange again. And then that means you can decide whether you need another double crochet round. Or whether you want to leave it at that. Again, it comes down to tension. Tension. 
Oh, I'm going to be on to the orange, yeah, with this one. I've not got any orange at all on either of them, have I? But we might get a teeny weeny bit of orange on this one. I am actually round. So I'm going to go into that one because that was when I finished and then into this one. Now I'm not I've not finished that stitch off as you can see. If I'd said I wasn't going to do any more rounds, I'd make it a slip stitch. But because I want to check on my orange, I'm not going to yet because it might mean there's going to be another round. But no, I think, shall we? Yes, I'm going to do another double crochet round. So we might need our stitch marker. Oh, don't want your ear though. Put your ear down. Because it's not so easy to see when they're doubles, is it? So, off we go. I'm just curious. I just want to put a bit of the orange in, really. I think that's what it is. But you might not need it. It just depends on how it is sitting on your orange. I think to do another round, it does tighten it a little bit. So, perhaps, you know, that is a point. But just have a look at what it's like for your fit. Oh, I quite like the orange. It's a very soft orange. And I think because it's changed the colour, it also edges it a bit better. So this is just one double crochet into the top of each of those double crochets. I've got to decide whether to do this as a pattern to go on my website to buy or not yet. I don't know. I don't know whether it's one that just stands alone on YouTube. Um, it's a tricky one with patterns. I'll just finish this and then I'll tell you. Right, slip stitch. Preference, that is just my pure preference. I like to finish off with a slip stitch. Uh, I just think it looks flatter than finishing just with a double crochet. So let's get rid of the stitch marker off there because we're going to need it. And let's see, I'll tuck all the ends in. You do need to sew all your ends in, of course. But yeah, it's made it a little bit tighter. So it sort of sits around the orange a little bit better yep so that is our little jumper I, like, I quite like the fact this got that little bit of orange it sort of makes it a little bit different so that's our orange cover but of course to turn it into a bunny we need a little face don't we so that's my little ear i need to change my yarns over i'll move that one behind me now and bring this one in as i say you don't need to use the glittery one i don't know whether you can see you can just see the glitter can't you um it's just a thing I like. Um, nearly everything I do in white usually ends up with a glitter yarn because I just like the effect of it. So let's get on with this little bun's head. It is an amigurumi style for the head. So onto the hook. Let's pull a little bit of yarn about so it doesn't start, start sliding around the table. Now I do, the only thing I will comment on, this sparkly one I use, it is a little bit finer for some reason. It's just companies, it's a different brand to the other one and some are slightly thicker and some aren't. So again, that's why sometimes you have to play around with your measurements. So here we go, one, two, then six into this first one. One, two, yeah, split it, take it out, three, four five and six just tighten it up and two in each now so it starts like the top of the body did really doesn't it which most amigurumi does anyway it's all very very similar so two in the first one two in number two two in number three number four number five and in number six and i just want to tighten the center up there we go so you can see it's nice and smooth now yeah my pussycat is now coming here she does this strange thing she leaves me in the room and she goes somewhere else and then she starts crying as if she can't find me um but so she's just running now so she might join us might not so we now have 
12 stitches we need 24 we need more than 24 to be honest but the next round is a 24 so that is two in each of the 12 so exactly the same as the top so that's one two so i'm just counting the single numbers but doing two in each one and that is for three two in four two in five six seven eight nine ten eleven and twelve so we now should have 24 stitches and I'm going to bring in the stitch marker Ta -da! now we need another increase of course because 24 is not enough now it's similar this time it's not the same as the last one we're going to do two in the first one and then one one yeah so we do a two a one a one all double crochets and we should end up with eight sets of that which will give us 32 stitches so here we go so we have a two a one and a one that's our first one i'm going to rely on the stitch mark a bit more this time so we can have a two a one and a one that's my second set we have a two a one and one that's set number three we have a two one one set number four we have a two one and a one number five that is we have a two we have a one we have a one that was set number six don't worry if it's looking a little bit wiggly it does do that it'll straighten out when we do the next bit so where's that so this is the seventh set isn't it that i'm doing now one and one and our last set we have a two we have a one and we are around so as i said can you see it goes a little bit wibbly wobbly it really really doesn't matter when you start doing just the double crochet rounds it settles down nicely now i'm just looking at my writing i have written down that we need five double crochet rounds so i'm going to put my pen to this side again and i'm going to be counting five and i'm just going to use my stitch marker and it will start to sort of curve around anyway so off we go so just one double crochet in every single stitch and we're going to do that round five times so this is just round number one now something i was going to say and then i paused because i was changing the yarn etc etc is regarding patterns i've got to decide whether it's going to be a pattern online um somebody asked me a very valid question the other day they said why do i charge for the patterns online when obviously on youtube is free yeah fair enough now that does make sense with what she asked for but the com the answer was a little bit difficult for me to explain basically the patterns online are sold partly because when i'm just doing it like this for example that's what it looks like it's just a messy piece of sort of paper that I've worked pattern out on. When I do them online, obviously I have to make sure they are readable. Um, so, you know, I have to rewrite them. I have to type them up. I have to make sure and then I will double check them by doing them again or rereading them or sort of getting somebody else to check them, make sure that they make sense. I mean, mistakes are still made but you know i do try and make sure there's no mistakes and then obviously i need to get the photograph put the photo on and then i have to put them onto my website um so yeah that is why there is a charge right let me just mark that one off um but you know i do try and keep them quite sort of cheap on average my patterns are around one pound 60 each going around again here um 
and they are downloadable patterns for you to download and print off. Um, so uh, I know sort of have a look at other people's patterns to get a rough idea on price. And I do know I'm definitely at the lowest end for price uh, for the patterns. The other thing is not everybody wants a pattern. Not everybody likes that. I like a pattern. I like because, I mean, I will print my own off and keep them in a file as well. Um, I like to have patterns, physical patterns. Um, so some people like that. They like to collect them up and I get that 100%. But then there's other people who don't need it. Or there's a lot of people out there that actually don't read patterns. They can't read patterns or they're not comfortable reading a pattern. So for them, the YouTube option is way easier. So that's just sort of a brief reasoning why there is a charge for my patterns that I've got on my website. Also, there's a few patterns on my website also that I haven't done on YouTube. So there's, there's a bit more of a selection on there. I need to start putting links in below. I'm really bad for this. I say I'm going to put a link and then I completely forget when I put the video up right let me mark that one off a minute I think I need to move my stitch marker up because otherwise it's too many rounds without it there we go so we're off again and I'm on round three I hope I'm on round three <laughs> also again with a written pattern if you're not quite understanding what I'm saying on here it's nice to sort of come sort of have a look and go oh yeah yeah that's that, that's what she means so that's it. That, I need to put my details on. I will put my details on. I will try and really remember to put my details on at the bottom. Um, but the pattern isn't actually made for Bunny just yet. I will put the details on uh, when it is. So off we go. So we're not far off. I mean, there's not many rounds for his head. We do need to pop his eyes in. And we need to obviously sew him together and pop a little bit of stuffing in there as well. Almost round to the carrot. Almost looks like a snowman like that, doesn't it? <laughs> With his uh, little carrot nose. But we're not looking at Christmas just yet. We'll do Easter first. And then hopefully we're going to have some nice summer. And we can do some summery crochet as well. Can you see how it's sort of pushing round now? But we still need a little bit more. So off we go again. Now this to me is round four. I think probably this bit takes longer than the body. <laughs> Just seeing if I can see the clock. Actually, you know, we're only actually on 20 minutes for this video, which that's pretty good. Um, so, yeah, I think it's definitely classed as a quick make. I know there's other parts to do yet, but on average, I think it's quite a quick make. I think if I can sort of do one under an hour or approximately hour, I think you can class it as a quick make. I think sewing up and putting the details on can sometimes take as long as actually making it though. But we will look at that in a minute or two. So we're almost at the end of round. I've split it there. Can you see I've split the yarn? When they've got these um, filaments in, the glittery filaments, sometimes they split easier. If it does that, take it out. Don't try and carry on because it'll make it hard for you to work with. So that is the end of round number four. Last round, number five. Or well, last round of this bit anyway. Just nosing at my pattern at the same time then. See, I need to write the patterns up because I can't read them off at a time terrible ever such a scribbly writer I am and um, when I'm making notes I sort of end up making so many it's unbelievable little jumper I'm doing for a blithe at the moment I think I've decided on the final design um but it's on its fifth draft of what it's going to look like see that's the other thing when you're trying to make a pattern readable it does take a lot longer all right we need to work out his eyes in a second as well Just 
just a few more to go. And slip stitch for the last one. And I've done. Yay! That is the bunny's head. Now you do need to make sure here you're leaving enough yarn because you need to sew it onto here. And you could add yarn, but it's much easier if you've left a nice long yarn tail to sew it onto there. It just makes it easier rather than rejoining more yarn. And stitch marker out. Ta -da. Now you can see roughly how it's going to go so that's his little head so we need to work out his eyes so I will do the eyes with you because I can't sew his head on unless I do although I've done that before now sewn a head on something and then realized I've not done the eyes so you can see roughly where I've put it you can do all sorts of eyes you could do sometimes I think it was a while back I did some with some really tiny eyes oh I think it was me uh, nutcracker wasn't it and <laughs> He looks so cute with these little eyes. So let's have a look. I think that looks about right. So I'm going to do him roughly the same as the other bunny. So yeah, play away, play about with those facial features. They don't have to all be the same. Now I'm just doing that so I know these are approximately the same. That will do me. Yep, that looks about right. So now I'm happy with that, I can put the backs on. So I'm just going to turn it inside out so I can do it, so I can lean on it. Now these backs are really good. Be careful when you're buying these things. Do not buy cheap ones because these backs will crack if they're cheap. And obviously then it becomes more dangerous. So with these particular ones, and when you can see it's the bow section upwards. Now for me, because I'm used to this particular brand, I know that slightly pushes it on and then there'll be two clicks. I know that's on now secure different ones will be different so you might need to sort of have a bit of an experiment so that's first position on and then we need two clicks oh I think I did one too many right the only problem can you see that makes that slightly longer oh it hasn't pulled thankfully sometimes if you do it too tight it pulls into the yarn so uh, Take your time when you're doing that. Don't rush like I've just done. Now, for his little nose, we can add this on now. I don't know why I've got two pieces there. Um, it would be an idea if I'd actually had some needles. Now, there are a load over here, all over the place. We'll go with that one. They're on a magnet, so I can't lose them. I'm going to, with this one, with this guy, I did actually sew the facial details on afterwards. But to be honest, it would be better to do it first because then you're not worrying. You can just knot it on the inside because you're going to be stuffing it so nobody's going to see it. So I'm just going to make a nice big knot. There we go. Like I say, no one's going to see this. And I've just sort of done the little nose sort of in between his eyes. And literally, this is all I did. Back through. And through. There, yeah, that's it. That is all it took. You can make it thicker, you can make it different expressions, things like that. I think I did that one a little. I think that probably had three, but I think two is adequate there. And because it's on the inside, again, I'll get away with doing a knot rather than trying to embroider over the top. So let's just make sure that's not going anywhere. And also, because it's a light pink, you're not going to see it when you stuff it. So don't worry about sort of seeing extra bits of yarn. Sometimes if you have to do something that's sort of a darker colour, it can show under white. So you do have to be careful. So that's his little head. And we see that. That was very cute. The next stage we need is an ear. I have one ear here. Again, amigurumi ear. I said the ear a lot of times then. Let's move that yarn out of the way. And let's get this ear done. And apart from the pom pom and sewing together, oh, that is it. Check, I picked the right hook up. I've got a couple of hooks at the side of me here and have been known to pick up the wrong one. So this is our 3.5, so it's okay. So we're going to start exactly the same as the top two chain six double crochets into that first one one two three four five 
and six and tighten it up now i'm not going to increase massively so it's not going to be two in each it's going to be two in the first one and then a one a two a one a two and a one we'll do it three times to give us nine stitches so into that first stitch we're going to do two double crochets and then we're going to do a one that's the first set then we're going to do a two double crochets Then we're going to do a one that's my second set and the last set a two and a one i'm hoping the lighting's not changing too much it's really cold i don't even know whether i've said this i've said it in my head but i don't want to say it to you guys a tendency to do that i'm thinking through things while i'm doing other things and then i don't know whether i've said it or not yeah it's very cold outside but the sun is very bright and it keeps coming in and out so uh, it keeps altering the light in here very slightly so we have nine stitches now i want a little bit more so i'm going to do roughly what i've just done i'm going to do a two in one then a one one so we're only increasing another three times so it'd be a two one one two one one two one one okay so here we go so we have a two we have a one we have a one that is set number one we have a two so there's three sets We have a, a one and a one. My last one, set three, we have a two. We have a one and a one. So I have 12 stitches now. So I'm gonna just pop it over my finger like that to make sure it's the right way around. And we're now just gonna do four rounds of 12. There's no point putting the stitch marker in for something this size. And so off we go. We're just gonna to count to 12 four times. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 and 12, so that's round one. So I'll just mark it down, I'll put them on my pen, it's over there. So I just want four rounds. Now it doesn't have to be four rounds, you can make these longer ears. I mean, you can make them lop ears. So I know one I did last year, the body wasn't like this, but I did ears that hung down. So then maybe you want more rounds. It, it's up to you how you work this, but I've done four on this one. So this is my second round to Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven, and twelve. That's round two, round three. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. We need another round. This is my, I'm just looking. I've written four there, but this is looking a bit short. We'll see how it goes. So we have one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 and 12. Now, I know I did stretch this one, but that doesn't look enough, does it? Is that look enough? That looks too small. Right, I'm going to do five rounds. Again, if you've got a pet rabbit, you might find some of, some of them have little tiny wee ears, don't they? And some of these absolutely huge loppy ears. Um, so just make it on the length you want. Just make sure they're both the same, which is I am now having to make this one longer. So fifth round then. One, two, three, four five 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And I'm making it that, and I'm doing a slip stitch finish. Again, leave enough yarn here to sew onto the head. Just makes life a little bit easier if we remember that. So I always give it a little stretch. So we'll see how it is. And I think that's okay. Yeah. I think that will do me. So let's have a little look. I'm not going to do it all with you, but let's have a little look at sewing the head onto the body. First of all, this bit, it can just be stuffed inside. Um, it sort of just adds to the stuffing, so it doesn't really sort of doesn't hurt. You don't need to cut it off or sew it in or anything like that. We can just pop it on like that. So let's get my needle in. And I'll show you roughly. Now, if you have a look at this one, you can see I haven't stitched it right down to here. I've sort of left the equivalent to one double crochet round there showing before I've gone into the jumper. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to start from the back. Now, if you can tell where your back is, because I've still got the yarn tail there. I know that's the back, but you don't, don't have to. Hopefully it's neat enough that that's not a problem. So you can see here, this is where I'm not going to go onto this bit here. I'm just going to work in the one that's just above it. So that should anchor it into place. I'm going to pick up both pieces of this. And then I'm going to go in to that slightly just above the last double crochet round. And if you can consistently do that all the way around, I mean, it's gone onto the yellow now, so I've got to be careful. I find it really hard to actually demonstrate sewing up because if I'm sewing up, this is right next to my body. Um, I hold it really close to myself when I'm sewing up. Whereas obviously at the moment I'm holding it quite a distance away from myself. So it's a slightly weird positioning for me. So you can see how it's stitching on there. Now, if you want to sort of double check, make sure his head stays central. Let me just push that up. One way I will do that, apart from the fact we're having to follow this line, is I've got him in position. Oh, squish his head there. So because I'm keeping that in the middle, its head's not going to move over. We just push this in to do it rather than having to move his head out of place. So again, I'm pulling it towards myself. Behave. I'm going in every single stitch in his head. Because we need to make sure it's solid. It's not going to come off. I'm just into that yellow at the minute and I've got to make sure that's where I'm staying. I'm sort of, the colour's making me want to sort of move down, but I, oh, we need to stay there. We need to stay on the same round underneath as we are staying at the top. Now, obviously, I need to stuff it at some point. I think I can go a little bit further before I do that, but. So, yeah, but. Yeah, we'll do a few more stitches before I stuff. As you notice, I am doing it on the orange as well because I do find that easier. Right, let's have a little look. So, we still need to stitch this bit. Now, this is the toy stuffing I'm using. I do buy a proper toy grade stuffing. Um, you can use bits of your yarn if you've got let's say, leftover bits of the white yarn where you've cut it off or things like that. See how it's coming on. I think I did do that eye slightly tight. I think it'll be all right, though. So, I think tiny weeny bit. No. No, I think that's enough stuffing. Again, personal choice. Sometimes they're stuffed more and tighter because they will stretch, so it will alter the shape of your work. So, it's up to you how you actually do the stuffing on that one. So, I've got enough in there, I think. Harder to hold now, so you do have to hold it with the stuffing as well. Got a few more to do and then we're going to do one here and then i'm going to leave it to you to add any details and sort of 
personalize it up for yourself I mean, I know I've used a variegator yarn here, but uh, for example, if you wanted to make it like a football team colour, I think I do need some more stuffing in there. That feels a little bit loose. Um, you could just stripe it. It means you're stopping and starting each round, but I think it would look quite nice. It'd be huge, so cute. So picking it up and stitching it down. Need to do some photographs of it as well afterwards um, for the thumbnail and the patterns. Although it is quite cute. It's a bit bleak outside though. I know the sun's coming through, but I don't it's not very good for taking photos at the moment. Last couple of stitches. Should I push that stuff in? in? Come on, go in. There we go. And our last stitch. And I need to do a little knot and then push the yarn through the body. Well, through the head. No point pushing it through the body, is there? Where have I gone? There we are. And I'm just going to push it through one. If you push it through the stuffing, it sort of holds it as well a little bit better. That's why I do it a few times. Right, so that is his head on. It does look funny without his ears. Straighten the eyes out, make sure they're nice and neat in position. Now for the ear, now I'll take the one that I did previously. You can see I've already cut off the first bit I just pushed it in there to be honest I didn't really cut it off much and then I'm going to make sure this is to the side before I stitch it because it will help position it if I do that I'll show you why well I will if I can thread my needle hands are a little bit cold at the minute I think I need to heat them up before I do my next project so basically I want that at the side because I'm going to fold it there so can you see what difference shape that makes but by having that wool on the side I can just go through like that so it holds it before I try stitching it I need to decide on the ear position obviously I've gone for the upright ear this time but you could do a downward ear so you would need it longer definitely I've definitely done that one a bit longer haven't I let's have a look mm, it might be slightly shorter but again that's something you can play with to work out your personality of your bunny so let's find a little space for his ear and it goes and we need a few stitches all the way around for this. We need to make sure his ear is not going to drop off, don't we? So I do work all the way around it. I don't just put it on in the one bit. So even on this bit here. So I'd say you end up with about eight stitches, eight, nine stitches, something like that. So I'm working all the way around the ear to make sure it's not going to come off. That's where I started. It's pretty solid now. It's not coming off that. So again, like with the head, we need a little knot on the outside. And then I'm going to thread it through the ear, I think, this time. Or you can thread it through the body. That is entirely up to you. So I'm going to leave it there because I want to put a bit more detail. I need to put the other ear on as well. So that is the ear. Now you will have seen on this one, it has a little bit of pink on the inside. Now this particular pink, I, I wish I'd not done with this product. I've got a Pro Marker, which I normally, so it's like a felt tip if you don't know what Pro Markers are. I would normally put a little pink mark in there. I couldn't find my Pro Marker, so I actually did it with a watercolour pencil. I think, I think it's worked. But be careful, maybe practice on sort of a spare bit or something if you're going to be putting any colourings on of any sort. But I think it makes a difference just adding that little pink. It gives it like a bit of a pop. So, uh, oh look, he, he looks, he does look smaller, doesn't he? <laughs> he looks like, I think I've stitched his head on slightly different. Perhaps I like, should have been a little bit further down. But he still looks cute. It's his little brother. We'll do it that way. Um, 
or his little sister or whatever. Now we have a little, little, little bit of nonsense there. They're just some little silk flowers that I put on. Um, you can put them on if you want. You could put more flowers on if you want. You know, you could add a bow tie. There's so much you can do. My patterns here are a baseline and then it's something that you can then add your personality to, which I've seen a lot of you do for the ones who've sent me the photos. They've been fabulous. It's just so nice to see another person's variation of your pattern. It really is nice. So, that's it. That is our bunny. Don't forget, um, I know I mentioned in the intro, I now have started a Patreon, only just, um, and I've got our little bunny. In fact, he's not got his egg in at the moment because I'm doing something else. We've got a little bunny there who is a uh, cream egg cover and he's on my Patreon as a pattern. I'm going to try and make sure both have roughly equal sort of information, but the Patreon does have a little bit more um, that I wouldn't put on here perhaps. Perhaps that's the way of saying it. So if you do want to join me on that, I'll pop a link for the Patreon below as well. Because I've got to put a link on, haven't I, for my website. I will remember. I will, I will, I will. Um, so you can follow me on Instagram, etc, etc. So hope you're going to enjoy Bunny. Hope you're going to make some nice ones for Easter. I think he's very cute. I'm really quite proud of him. And I will see you all very soon. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And bye bye for now.